Welcome to our lecture today about ABGs. ABG stands for arterial blood gas. You request this test whenever you um, think that your patient is in respiratory failure and you want to see the oxygen content of the blood. You are also looking for uh, respiratory complications like hypercapnia. So the way this happens is that um, you ask your respiratory technician or respiratory therapist to get a blood um, sample, but this has to be from the ar arterial side. So it's either the radial artery. Now, some patients have an arterial line already, either in their radial or in their femoral, where they don't need a fresh stick. They will just have to take a syringe, and that syringe uh, will just take the blood sample from there. The way that the ABGs are uh, reported, usually they have it in this manner, pH slash CO2 slash O2 slash and bicarb. I want to note that once they give you all of this information, those values are actually true measurement, while the bicarb value is actually a calculated one. Usually it's within uh, the right range, but to be more accurate, the bicarb value should be from a basic metabolite panel from a venous draw. Nevertheless, you can use it for um, your interpretation of an ABG. Things that you should know, the usual pH is 7.4, 7.35 to 7.45. CO2 level 40, people accept 35 to 45. The oxygen level should be above 65, but the normal should be definitely 80 to 100 on room air. And then the bicarb um, is 24. Now, in order for you to interpret ABGs, the first thing you ask yourself, pH, is it less than 7.4 or above 7.4 if it's less than 7.4 then this is acidosis if it's above 7.4 then this is alkalosis some physicians tell you this is acidemia and alkalemia meaning that your blood is acidic and your blood is alkalotic then the next question you would ask yourself is by looking at the CO2 and the bicarb. If the CO2 is high, then this makes it respiratory acidosis. If the bicarb is low, then this makes it metabolic acidosis. While if you have alkalosis, you ask yourself, is the bicarb high? Then that makes it metabolic alkalosis. While if the CO2 is low, then that makes it respiratory alkalosis. And this is the easiest way to find out the primary cause of your uh, abnormality in ABGs. This is the basics of uh, reading ABG. I have to note and emphasize that you should not skip to step two. You should always ask yourself this question. And then once you answer it, you figure out if the patient has acidosis or alkalosis. And then you ask yourself what caused it. And then there are other calculations to know if your patient has um, compensated or not compensated. And also there are other calculations to figure out if your patient has another disorder in addition to the primary disorder. And we will talk about this in a later video. If you have enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like it, share it with your colleagues, and subscribe to our channel.